What's good family, welcome back to the channel. So I've been coming across a lot of suggested videos on YouTube talking about how the closing ceremony of the Olympics was satanic. Now, is this just people overreacting? I don't know. We're about to give this video right here a look. It seems as if it's going to be explaining why people are deeming this ceremony satanic. Now, I'm not surprised at all if this is indeed the case because we already saw the opening ceremony, which was the mockery of the Last Supper. So the closing ceremony, I guess they need to end it off with a cherry on top for all these satanic people that uh, like to do these type of rituals and things of that nature. So by the end of this video, we're going to conclude whether it is truly satanic or if people are just overreacting. Bro, even the music seems like ritualistic. No surprise, the 33rd Olympic Games in Paris closed with a ceremony dedicated to the rebirth of Lucifer, Lucifer's fall from heaven. Leg bent and positioned like the hanged man's, who in the occult represents the ultimate surrender. It is very similar. So let's get into this video right here. It's the Satanic Olympics closing ceremony exposed. Let's see what they have to the say. The times we live in are marked by a growing darkness and wickedness that seeks to exalt the power of the God of this world. As we reflect on the recent events of the Olympic Games, particularly the closing ceremony held on Sunday, August 11th in Paris, it is imperative that we open our eyes to the spiritual realities at play. These ceremonies, both the opening and closing, have been steeped in symbolism that cannot be ignored, serving as a stark reminder of the influence and power of Satan, who the Apostle Paul refers to as the God of this world in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. The title God of this world has great significance. The Apostle Paul's reference to Satan as the God of this world But it is lowercase g God of this world is not a title given lightly. Right. In the Bible, when someone is ascribed a title, it carries with it profound significance, encapsulating the essence, role, and influence of that individual. Satan, as the god of this world, wields considerable control over the systems and structures of this age. He influences governments, cultures, and even religions, twisting them away from the truth of God. Yes, Satan himself has founded religions, an unsettling truth that many Christians struggle to accept. However, as Christians, it's crucial to recognize that Lucifer, as the god of this world, wields power. Using this power, he has established religions that have led billions of people astray. The Bible says it so clearly. Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now, again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. The Bible warned us never trust an angel who preaches another gospel other than the one that has been preached. Do you know that actual religions have been started based on an individual claiming they had been visited by angels? And these angels came to them with divine revelation preaching another gospel. The Bible describes him as the God of this world for a real reason. This title reminds us that Satan's influence is pervasive and insidious. He is not an innocent bystander, but an active agent of deception, steering the hearts and minds of people away from God. However, we must always remember that while Satan may have power in this world, his rule is not ultimate. Psalm chapter 24 verse 1 declares, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. The sovereignty of God remains unchallenged. Everything in this world is ultimately under God's dominion. Yet, within the boundaries allowed by God, Satan exercises a form of dominion, particularly over those who do not acknowledge the true God. The recent Olympic ceremonies provide a vivid example of just how pervasive his influence is, revealing the spiritual warfare that is often hidden beneath the surface of our daily lives. During the opening ceremony, many perceived a display that was unmistakably demonic, filled with imagery and symbolism that glorified Lucifer. The ceremony was a spectacle of darkness, presenting a narrative that was at odds with the light of the gospel. But if the opening ceremony set a high bar for such inspiration, the closing ceremony outdid itself, further revealing uh. the depths of spiritual warfare that rages around us. The central figure of the closing ceremony was the golden voyager who scours a lifeless, desolate earth, 
The organizers of the event claim that this character is a tribute to various elements of France's historical heritage, including the spirit of the Bastille. However, for those who are spiritually discerning, it is clear that this figure is a representation of Lucifer himself. The mainstream media may mock and dismiss the concerns of Christians, claiming that we are overreacting or seeing things that aren't there, but the symbolism is undeniable for those who understand the spiritual battle at play. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, that Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. This golden voyager descending to the earth is a chilling reminder of Lucifer's fall. He was once an exalted being, a bearer of light, but through his rebellion, he was cast down from his high position. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 15 recounts this fall. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Despite the widespread criticism and concern, the closing ceremony doubled down on the controversial imagery, making it clear that these choices were not accidental, but deliberate. Very As the golden voyager continues his journey, he encounters the goddess Nike, pronounced Nika, depicted as a headless statue, along with hordes of acrobatic performers. The headless goddess also reminds us of the fallen angels, who abandoned their rightful place in heaven and were cast down to earth. Jude chapter 1 verse 6 speaks of these angels, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. These fallen angels, like Lucifer, rebelled against God's order and were cast down as a result. The headless Nika, surrounded by acrobatic performers, is a grotesque parody of this rebellion and fall. As we reflect on the closing ceremony of the Olympic Games, we must recognize it for what it is, a public, global display of allegiance to the powers of darkness. It is a reminder that we are engaged in a spiritual battle, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The ceremonies we have witnessed are not merely artistic performances or cultural celebrations. They are rituals that glorify Lucifer and the fallen angels. They are a manifestation of the God of this world who seeks to deceive and blind the minds of the unbelieving. As Christians, we are called to be vigilant and discerning, to recognize the spiritual realities that lie beneath the surface of such events. We must also remember that, despite the darkness that seems to prevail in this world, the victory belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ. He has triumphed over sin, death, and the powers of darkness, and he will return in glory to establish his kingdom. Until that day, we must stand firm in our faith, resist the devil, and proclaim the truth of the gospel to a world that is lost and deceived. Let's say we are reading too much into this closing ceremony that perhaps our interpretation of the symbolism is overreaching. But even if that were true, I struggle to understand how anyone can view what took place as anything other than some sort of ritual. The deliberate choice of symbols, the orchestrated- yeah, it was definitely a ritual. Like even the music in the background seemed very rit ritualistic, 100%. Performances and the careful selection <coughs> of imagery all point to something more than mere entertainment. Yeah. It is as if the ceremony itself is a mirror. Because in reality, it wasn't even that entertain. It wasn't like entertaining. Like it was nothing like crazy, like a circus or whatever. Like it was like something very intentional with the meaning behind it. Reflecting the spiritual realities of our time, and if our eyes are open, we cannot help but see it for what it is. I hope this Olympic Games and its opening and closing ceremony have opened your eyes to the times we live in. You are living in dark times, where Satan does not operate in the shadows, but parades himself openly without reservation. Gone are the days when his influence was hidden behind closed doors or subtle deceptions. Now, it is in plain sight for all who are willing to see. The powers of darkness no longer hide. And the reason why I believe that things are becoming much more bold, like it was never like this, but like 30 or 50 years ago when it comes to like the music 
and the ceremonies that they do before huge events. It's just because it does talk about revelations. There is going to be a time where there's an antichrist that does have power over the world. And I, I believe different things like this, like openly mocking Jesus, openly mocking God, and having different ceremonies gets people, it's almost preparing them. It's almost preparing the mass majority of people without them knowing for that coming of the Antichrist. Right. They celebrate their influence in broad daylight, daring us to notice, daring us to speak out. Consider this, Olympic athletes were banned from displaying Christian symbols at the games, despite the opening ceremony featuring an obvious parody of one of the most iconic Christian symbols, Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. The irony here is striking and cannot be dismissed. Brazilian surfer Joao Chianca discovered this harsh reality when his surfboard, adorned with an image of Christ the Redeemer, was deemed a religious symbol. He was forced to remove it to avoid disqualification from the competition. Think about that for a moment. Wow. A simple image of Christ, a symbol of hope, love, and redemption, was deemed unacceptable in a global event that claims to promote unity and peace. What does this That's tell wild. us about the true nature of these so-called global celebrations? Another Brazilian athlete, Reza Leal, faced a similar challenge. She chose to quote a Bible verse in sign language, sharing the powerful words of John chapter 14, verse six. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In a world that increasingly seeks to silence the name of Jesus, Reza's boldness stands out. She found a way to proclaim the truth of the gospel, even in an environment that actively discouraged it. Yet, this very act of faith highlights the clear anti-Christian agenda present in these Olympic games. From the mockery of the Last Supper to the suppression of Christian expressions, the message is clear. The world is moving further and further away from the truth of Christ. But let us not be discouraged, for the wonderful thing is that Jesus Christ will always be exalted. No matter how much the world may try to suppress his name, no matter how many times his followers are told to be silent, the truth of Jesus Christ cannot be erased. The Bible That's tells facts. us in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Throughout history, leaders, kingdoms, and rulers have come and gone. Many have tried to remove the name of Christ or the Bible from history. They have burned Bibles, persecuted Christians, and attempted to silence the message of the gospel. But they have all failed. The word of God remains, and it will continue to remain because it is the truth. It is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It is the very breath of God, eternal and unchanging. Even as the world grows darker, the light of Christ shines brighter. In every generation, there have been those who have tried to snuff out the flame of Christianity, but they have never succeeded. The message of the cross is as powerful today as it was 2,000 years ago. People continue to come to faith in Christ, lives continue to be transformed, and the kingdom of God continues to advance. We serve a risen savior, a king who has conquered death and the grave. Jesus Christ is alive, seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will return in glory. Revelation chapter one, verse seven declares, look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be, amen. In a world that seeks to exalt everything except the name of Jesus, we have a mission. We are called to be salt and light, to stand firm in our faith and to proclaim the gospel boldly. Matthew chapter five, verses 13 to 16. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The darker the world becomes, the more it needs the light of Christ. And that light shines through you and me, through our words, our actions, 
and our unwavering commitment to the truth of the gospel. Let us not be intimidated by the powers of this world, for they are temporary and fleeting. Let us not be silent when the world tells us to keep our faith private, for the message of Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. And let us not be discouraged when we see the darkness growing around us, for we know that the light of Christ will ultimately prevail. As we reflect on the events of the Olympic Games and the times we live in, let us be reminded of the words of Jesus in John chapter 16, verse 33. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Our Lord has already won the victory. The battle has been fought and won on the cross. And because of that, we can face the future with confidence and hope. Brothers and sisters, let us continue to exalt the name of Jesus in everything we do. Let us lift high the banner of the gospel, knowing that every knee will bow. Hey bro, at the end of the day, there's no one like Jesus. Not on earth, nor in heaven, nor in all of history and eternity. And that's the reason why he's attacked so heavily, is because he is the way to eternal life. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Smash the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Peace.